you are extraordinary. Oh, stop it. Welcome to the Debunked Bunker, where I have a casual outlet for my dry wit and sarcasm. And thank you for inviting me. We've got a lot to talk about. So, backstory. About a year ago, John McRae was invited onto Braxton Hunter's channel to address popular atheist talking points. But then they realized it'd be kind of boring with just two bald guys, so I was included in the interview to assure his audience that some Christians actually have a head of luscious hair. But then a few months ago, Stephen Woodford from Rationality Rules decided to respond to our segment on the atheist talking point, Extraordinary Claims Require Extraordinary Evidence. And maybe, just maybe, we will finally get a definition on what atheists mean by extraordinary. Back to you, Stephen. Today, we're going to take a look at two prominent apologists and Braxton. Well, that wasn't passive aggressive at all, was it? Two prominent apologists and Braxton? Show me on the doll where Braxton hurt you. The Sagan standard is the adage that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. And it signifies that the more unlikely a claim is, that is, the more the claim violates our models, evidence, and understanding, the greater the standard of proof that is required. For instance, if you told me that you had a cat in your garden, then I'd have little trouble accepting this as it doesn't violate what I know about cats, gardens, geography, and so on. However, if you said you had a dragon in your garden, I might require a little bit more than your word to believe you. No offense. Yeah, simple stuff, really. Oh good! Well if it's simple, then it should be simple for you to define, beyond giving random examples that don't really define what an extraordinary claim is or what would qualify as extraordinary evidence. For example, if I say the most likely explanation is the one that's going to be the least ad hoc, I can give you a definition because philosophers and historians have defined in detail what this criterion means. So if you want to label a claim or evidence as extraordinary, you need to define what that term means, which you are going to do, right? Despite the Sagan standard being so simple and indeed popular, we're about to watch apologists somehow fail to understand it. I swear, at this point, having a propensity to misunderstand things is the most important quality an apologist can have. <laughs> Good one. So why don't you come off your high horse and define the term for us so we, the peasants, can stop misunderstanding your super genius argument. Please, continue with the definition. What the heck is extraordinary? Oh, don't you start. <sighs> Michael, you actually engage with rejoinders and so forth. Don't be feigning ignorance. All right, calm down, buddy. All I'm asking for is a simple definition. And I don't really like to call it feigning ignorance. I prefer the more philosophical phrase, Socratic irony. And that's all we're doing here. Just give us a definition if it's so simple. We need to have a certain amount of extraordinary You're points. extraordinary. Shut up. <laughs> okay, I'm sure that Michael didn't mean for that to be as funny as what it is. How dare you, sir? I am no coward. I intend every comical line I deliver. Okay, the weight of it. Uh, for Fruits. Fuck. Come on. You know what an extraordinary claim is. No, we don't. It's your argument. You need to define your terms. Notice how much Stephen is struggling to give us any definition of what extraordinary would mean. We're just supposed to magically know. All he can do is give us vague examples of things he qualifies as extraordinary. For, for instance, if you said that your cat weighed, say, 17 stone, that would be a hell of a claim that cries out for extraordinary evidence. Okay, if I see a giant cat, I'll know it's extraordinary. But I need some guidance on how to identify something as extraordinary that doesn't involve humongous felines. For example, the resurrection of Jesus didn't even involve regular cats. We were over halfway through Stephen's video and we still have not got a definition on what an extraordinary claim is or what would qualify as extraordinary evidence. And I thought this was supposed to be simple. Okay, since we're not getting a definition here, let's try looking it up in the dictionary. Oxford says, very unusual or remarkable. Merriam-Webster says, going beyond what is usual, regular, or customary. Cambridge says, very unusual, special, unexpected, or strange. So the general idea seems to be that extraordinary refers to events that just don't happen usually. But by that logic, numerous events throughout history qualify as extraordinary. Alexander the Great conquered the largest empire the world had seen up to that point by the time he was 33. That's unusual, and by the dictionary definition, extraordinary. But all the evidence we have for his life and deeds comes from biographies that were written hundreds of years after Alexander had died. So if extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, and all the evidence we have is far-removed testimony, which everyone accepts is sufficient, 
Does that mean we have extraordinary evidence for the extraordinary claims about Alexander? Hannibal crossed the Alps with a pack of elephants and invaded Italy, which sounds extraordinary. That doesn't happen every day. But likewise, all the evidence we have for that is testimony that was written down decades after the event had happened. So again, if extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, and testimony is enough for us to believe the extraordinary claims about Hannibal, does that mean that the testimony is extraordinary evidence? Labeling any of these events or the testimony for them as extraordinary is meaningless. It doesn't tell us anything new about the events or why we accept them as historical. And this is why it's pointless to go around for years saying that's an extraordinary claim and then when we ask for a definition, all we get is... You know what an extraordinary claim is. Yeah, it has something to do with fire-breathing dragons or giant cats. That's all we've gotten from you so far. Is Michael really this ignorant? Really? I don't buy it. He's deliberately being obtuse. I'm only as ignorant about a term as the person is who refuses to define the term. And if you don't understand the method of Socratic irony, I suggest you do a little more research. When someone says that, they're saying, well, I already have a worldview I've determined and anything that goes against it is extraordinary. So if it contradicts my worldview, it therefore is extraordinary and I need to have- No, no, no Michael, <laughs> for goodness sake. According to my worldview, domestic cats don't weigh over 40 kilo. You'd thus be contradicting my worldview if you claimed that some domestic cats do get to this size. But guess what? I'm not going to rule out such claims simply because it contradicts my worldview. I'm going to ask for proportionate evidence, and if you meet that burden, I'll change my worldview. And what does that burden look like in a detailed definition? We reached the end of this video and we still never got a definition of what extraordinary is. All we were told is... You know what an extraordinary claim is. Yes, it's whatever the skeptic needs it to be so they can dismiss the claim without thinking hard about it. An actual method for determining which worldview is most likely true is using philosophical criteria. The best explanation will have explanatory scope, explanatory power. It will be the least ad hoc, the most plausible, and it will provide illumination. Just labeling another worldview as extraordinary and then saying you need to provide evidence to meet my burden, whatever the heck that is, does nothing to help us determine which worldview fits with the evidence most. But setting that aside and using the criteria that Stephen has laid out for us, I think I can finally do it. I can give extraordinary evidence for extraordinary claims. And it's simple, really. From now on, when anyone says extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, well, I'm just going to label my evidence as extraordinary. I mean, have you seen the evidence I present? It's so convincing. You don't come across this type of evidence every day. It's clearly extraordinary. And don't ask me to define what I mean, because come on, you know what extraordinary evidence is, just like you know what an extraordinary claim is. So unless an atheist defines what they mean by extraordinary, I think we should just label all our evidence as extraordinary and say we've met their burden. After all, I'm just using their standard. A claim appears extraordinary to them, so it is. Well, the evidence appears extraordinary to me, so it is. Be sure to like this video and subscribe for more content. And if you truly want to be extraordinary, you can support me on my Patreon. See you next time.